The opinions expressed during this show are those of the individual participants and do not necessarily reflect the opinions of their associated organizations or Lifestyle Radio. show we are live and we are coming to you from lifestyleradio.ca i'm your host al graham tonight i'm back in the front window at canada's in camelford and if you walk by or wave or say walk by or wave drop in and say hi and if you do that we got some free stuff here for you such as some atomic bong bong cleaner Wayne here at uh, Canada Days is going to give that to anybody who comes in to the show, uh, during the show, into the store, and speaks into the microphone, asks a question, or gets involved in uh, the discussion. So to do that. As well as some other free stuff I've got here is uh, some DVDs, educational DVDs, some magazines. I got T-shirts. I got bags. I got pins, uh, posters, some why, why not posters. Um, and all you have to do for that is to go to the PACE website at pace-online.ca, write me a message, let me know that uh, you're looking for some free stuff, and uh, we'll send it to you. And actually, uh, our winner this week is Richard Caron. We're going to send him some stuff. He wrote us. So we're going to send him some free stuff as well. Um, tonight, uh, as far as my guest, uh, is a, he is an owner of a business. Um, that uh, Pace got involved in with many years ago. Actually, that at that time, I don't even know if I was even listed as Pace at that. Uh, it was so so long ago. But before I introduce him, I've got some news I want to discuss. And uh, that news happens to be something that I spotted in the uh, Globe and Mail. Uh, it was sent to me earlier today. Uh, it seems that the, the Canada's police chiefs are telling. Ottawa to reject some of the key recommendations um, that came out in their uh, that federal report on uh, legalization of uh, cannabis here in Canada. And uh, in the uh, discussion paper, the Canadian Association of Chiefs of Police calls on Ottawa to hold off on home grows. That's right. They don't want them. They don't want the people to start growing at uh, at home yet. And um, the reason that they they say that is that they believe that. Um, uh, personal cultivation could eventually would be eventually be allowed, but they wanted to hold off to allow, um, you know, them to figure out how they're going to enforce it. And I'm thinking, well, yeah, how do they know how how they're going to enforce it? But that's what uh, they were. They worry about the diversion to the black market. Uh, they worry about you know the the usual arguments. Um, you know, they worry about the children. They worried about the mold and things. Some of the stuff that has been shot down in the, in the courts, but they still worry about it. Um, they want it highly regulated in a controlled system, um, so that tells you that they probably want it just mail order only. Um, also, it goes on to say that uh, they have issues with the driving and legalization. They want the uh, government to invest more into the DREs, which, is a, which are the drug recognition experts. They feel that is the best solution. As we're seeing here lately, uh, some police forces here in Ontario have been doing uh, saliva tests, checking for THC, checking them in the environment to see after how they're, they work in the cold and the, you know the winter uh, weather. Uh, so they're um, so they want some more. They want some more money to train more of these uh, these officers. They want to send them down to the down to the U.S. and to get them trained so they can. And last I understood, uh, uh, it was like 250 different drugs apparently that they're supposed to be able to. To recognize, but uh, I, I don't know. They, if they feel you're stoned, they'll send you for some blood work, is what they, 
end result is. Um, they also mentioned that they support some of the recommendations that were in in the um, in the report, which you know, which is sort of expected. Things like the public education part, uh, the drug impaired driving, and the highly regulated production that I had already mentioned. So they you know they are in support of that part. Um, now, there's uh, as far as some of the some people look at well, when's all this when's all this legalization um, going to happen? Well, they're still talking. They're still talking two years away. Um, a senior official says that uh, they're looking at up the upcoming legislation, but they don't think that um, it's actually going to be expected to be up fully and running and regulated. The wholesale distribution market probably won't take effect until 2019. So, uh, you know, we're looking basically at two, another two years before it uh, will get uh, uh, cannabis will be legalized uh, here in Canada. So it's still, it's going to be, unfortunately, and, and which is very, very, not only is it unfortunate, but it's very wrong. And that's the people who are, um, who are paying the price by being arrested. And you know, that's, as some people have pointed out, there's been 140 different dispensaries uh, raided across Canada since all this has all sort of come about and it, uh, it's, it's not right. So that end of it all has to start. So, All right. Well, it was nice to get the police opinion. Unfortunately, it's got to be more than just the police opinion that's involved in those things. So to move on to our guest, at this time I'd like to welcome a friend and a person who, who I know that uh, likes to puff a lot. And I'd like to welcome Len Colday to the Pace Radio Show. How are you doing, Len? Good. Yourself? Thanks for Hi. the invite. Hey, hey. It's always, uh, you're very welcome. I thank you for uh, agreeing to come on to the show. It's always great to Wonderful. be able to talk to talk to you. And, and actually, it's been a while, so this works out really good. Absolutely, it's been quite a while, actually. Yeah, it has. You know, I I sort of think I sort of think back, and like you you had just sold your house in in Kingston. I think yeah. maybe once or twice we've communicated a few times after that. But as far as like getting together and sitting down and having you know a medication session together, it's been a while. Absolutely, too long. Too long. That's right. That's right. We'll have to get together. We'll have to. So at some point, we'll have to. Uh, you know, whether you're traveling by this this area, uh, or if I'm heading that way. Unfortunately, I don't Absolutely. have family that lives in. I used to have family that lived in uh, your area in your neck of the woods, but um, unfortunately, they're not long. They're no longer there anymore. Oh no. No. Well, we'll have to find another reason to come out and visit. <laughs> Yes, yeah, exactly. Like, how about just visit, come to visit Len? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> we'll have I've been to, looking we'll forward to, to something like that. We'll have to arrange that. So. Okay, uh, Len, you see what, uh, actually, so, I, and actually, I think um, when I was, I was looking for, uh, like, a picture and stuff for the posting, um, it looks like, um, boy, your, your, you know, your children have grown, too. Yes, Absolutely. It's good. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. My daughter's 10 now. Wow. Wow. You know, I think she was probably still in diapers last time. Last yes. time we got together. <laughs> yes. You know, it's, it's, I yeah, don't... it's, it's been a while. So this is great. You know, with, yes. um, so usually what I, what I like to try to do, uh, Len, to get things going is just, you know, quickly, you know, you don't have to get into super detail, but just a little bit do I, um, Tell us a little bit about yourself. I sort of call it a, a self introduction, and then um, I'll get into we'll get into some more um, super detail as we, as the show goes along. Okay. Um, well, I mean, I started my business in uh, 2003 uh, in the city of Kingston, in mm-hmm. uh, Portsmouth Village of uh, of Kingston, and. Um, progressed. Uh, I have uh, currently now three locations in Ottawa. Um, I have no longer have the location in Kingston, unfortunately. We had to shut down to some unforeseen circumstances. However, uh, uh, the three, three stores in Ottawa have been doing well. And um, the, the culture is just evolving at such a rate now, and the products are evolving at such a rate that uh, 
It's uh, almost getting hard to keep up. <laughs> oh, wow, great, because i got some questions about that as we go throughout the night. Yes. That, yes, that's, that's, that's great, because uh, it's, you know, it, things, that's what I've, I've noticed um, being involved in. It just, it, things just keep evolving, so it's always yes. good to hear. And, what's, um, what's, hopefully it's all going to work out for the best. Yes, with the legalization exactly. and stuff, it's. Um, I know things are still kind of in limbo, and it's uh, a little frustrating. Yes, yeah, and it, it is, and it, you know, it's as as that article in the Globe and Mail said. You're still looking two years away before they actually get to, you know, the full implemented, regulated it has to go through the provincial, and after you know, even after the the federal government releases their. Um, legislation here in the spring um, we still got the provincial end to go through as well and Wayne, uh, Wayne you could even speak to this, you just had a meeting uh, with the, with an MP MPP on that did you not, and how did, how, did um, uh, how was that? Just Yeah uh, the day before yesterday uh, we had a meeting with Jeff Leal who is the Minister of Agriculture and MP for Peterborough MPP for Peterborough. It was a, a nice conversation. Um, they really haven't made any moves in regards to uh, the legalized cannabis. They're waiting for the uh, federal government to release their their kind of idea of what legalization is going to look like. And when I asked if they'd read the 80 recommendations, um, the answer was no, and they aren't really interested because that's not what it's going to be. So <laughs> that's that's where we got with that. But I figure with the minute, him being the Minister of Agriculture, I'm really going to push him hard because he should be on top of this right now and not later. Yep, there you go. He just spoke to our, to, well, not our neighboring MPP. He's your MPP. And, um, yeah, they're not even discussing, you know, they're not even really discussing it. So it's going to be, it's going to be interesting to see. And you know, if, the, the, the longer they wait, the longer it's going to take for it to get implemented, right? I feel there's a lot of stalling tactics being used. Yeah, it'll be it'll be interesting to see what 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 they do, or you know, as far as if yeah, stalling tactics if they uh, if they keep it keep it up. So, and I know there was a report last week. Um, the justice minister said that they were going ahead with it. Was this way? One of the things everybody out there needs to do is start contacting their local MPs, their local MPPs, and their, their mayors and start getting these people together. So one of the things that we've come up with is once we meet everybody and tell them what we're about, we're going to have a, a big meeting. And so far, everybody we've met with has agreed to come to this meeting, federal, provincial, um, municipal, drug strategy, uh, police, everything. So we're going to hold a big meeting and try to get because the, the federal government has asked all these other levels of government to get engaged and start being involved. And, and they aren't. So if you can go out and talk to your local government and all, about all levels and start having meetings with them and get the discussion going, that will be a big step across Canada for this to happen quicker. There you go. Some good advice. Got to speak up. Interesting. We'll be, talking, we'll, we'll be talking about speaking up as we go along here, too. See what Puff a lot is doing for speaking up. Okay, Len. Um, so, so as far as, okay, Puff a lot, you said you started in 2003. Um, yes. what, what, um, I guess what was, what was the inspiration to get you to open up, uh, you know, bong store? I don't know whether you call it a head shop. Uh, it was just, uh, it was just a new market that I was, uh, personally really interested in. And, um, I just, uh. I just, I always knew in the back of my mind that I would be, you know, self-employed. I didn't really, uh, um, I didn't see myself working for other people per se, you know. So I started, uh, oh, I just opened my little business on a very tight budget, mind you. And uh, it just uh, slowly grew and I just grew with it and expanded and uh, just, you know, and, uh, quite a quite a journey along the way. So basically, you like you said, you started on a short budget. So you started, you built, you had to build the business. You started with the with the store in Kingston, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, yes. Did you do anything before that? Like I've I've noticed, like uh, our 
we had a guest on um, from the Brampton area, uh, Matt Rash, and he, he talked about doing flea markets and stuff like that before he opened up his store. Is Did you have anything similar to that, or did you just start with the store on the shoestring budget? No, I literally just jumped in, both hands, both feet, and just uh, put everything I had into the little store, and I never actually... Um, done any flea market or festivals or anything like that in the past it was just uh it was a brand new venture for me and i just uh i just went forward with it like that just jumped in both feet yeah yeah <laughs> yeah yeah exactly. it, it was it was a big risk i was really uh i was nervous about it at first let me tell you it was uh you know it just seemed like all the odds were against me and then uh i just i overcame each hurdle as they come along and uh you know Kept going, kept plugging away, you know. Yeah, exactly, exactly. That's what one of my questions was about. Did you have any problems along the way? Like you talking about hurdles? I know that uh, municipalities, uh, you know, the, the, the local governments um, can become a problem. Have you ran into any of those? Um, especially when you first started there in, in Kingston, did you run into any problems? Uh, well, I mean, it wasn't necessarily uh, problems. Um, I just felt like I ended up having to jump through uh, more hurdles than probably the average business just because of the, uh, you know, people questioning what it was I was going to be doing and selling, you know? Yeah. Uh, so however, I mean, I, I worked with the bylaw and I jumped through all the hoops and I just made sure all my my T's and I's were dotted and crossed and I just, uh, you know, I just went ahead with it and just wouldn't take right. no for an answer. <laughs> Did, um, you know. Now you that that building, um, there was you and another business that was in that was kind of connected, right? Um, yes, there was a barber was, shop. I, there was a little, uh, almost like a little duplex kind of commercial building, and uh, it was a barber shop on one side, and then my little shop on the other side. I know that uh, when I came and visited you, I go get a haircut, and I know that he always appreciated uh, people coming in. Yeah. Um, there was, uh, you know, it, it it just helps show it. Uh, your business helps bring other businesses and uh, for other people for other places. Absolutely, it kind of it kind of opened the door for, uh, you know, a lot of people saw that it was possible to run a business like this and have it hundred percent legal and not, you know, try to mm -hmm. make it not quite so so shady and kind of, you know, bring it out from the underground kind of thing, you know? Cor correct. Put, his, put a light on it. Well, do you, do you, um, talk about that, do you get involved in any local, like, um, uh, as far as the business-wise, uh, Chamber of Commerce or BIA? Uh, well, I participate in a couple of the BIAs. Uh, however, um, I, I don't really... Um, yeah, it's not your thing. I don't necessarily have like I would say like have a voice in the whole thing, you know. I just kind of, you know, just well, part of it because you're more or less forced to at some points, you know. Some of them, if your business is located on a certain street, you're kind of included in the whole thing, you know. Oh, uh, okay, okay. I think, um, yeah, maybe size. Yeah, exactly. The size of the places that you're, the city, you know, the location-wise, maybe. Yeah, I can see that for sure. The um, because I know here, like the like the Chamber of Commerce, they arrange for uh, when you do your grand opening, uh, dignitaries come, um, you know, cutting the ribbon ceremony. You get your picture in the paper. They, um, you know, you get you get do get involved in the meetings, I guess. Okay. Well, I I did a little bit. However, uh, there was certainly no ribbon cutting or anything. It was quite uh, unceremonious uh, opening. Unfortunately, it was almost. Uh, had a lot of locals coming in and, you know, kind of surprised that they were allowing me to stay in business, which obviously made me even more nervous. And I just kind of, you know, kept my head up and kept going, you know? Yep, exactly. But, yeah, just waiting for us to come in. But in re in unfortunately, to the there chamber, was no, there was no additional is, help uh, at the time. They're really supportive of uh, small business selling cannabis? when it becomes legal. So getting involved with them and being able to help push with that is, is I think, beneficial. And that, that's the Chamber of Commerce? Oh, there you go. There you go. Well, it's, a shout it's great out. that it's involved for that now. I mean, it certainly wasn't like that, uh, you know, 10-plus years ago, unfortunately. Yeah. It's, uh, 
I'm just yeah. glad to see that it's, some things are going in the right right direction. Yeah, it is exactly. It's uh, it's good to see yeah. that that uh, you know, there's some support. Starting to get there. more accepted, you know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And you know, if they they're getting involved in things, then um, you know, it helps. You know, it helps for the support and, and that. Uh, did um, now when you moved to Ottawa, did you run into any issues there? Uh, a lot less issues. Um, because the store had already been established and I kind of knew um, kind of what I needed to do and what I didn't. And uh, being a bigger city in Ottawa, uh, I think uh, maybe the, the bylaws and whatnot, they just had, you know, um, you know, bigger issues to deal with. And uh, they were less concerned with this type of stores. There were already quite a few in Ottawa here already. So it was a little easier, definitely in Ottawa, than the original store in Kingston. Yeah, well, you're, you're like you, you were not only in Ottawa, but you're also in the in the suburbs, right? Like uh, Orleans. Yes, yes, we're we're and, not necessarily downtown Ottawa. Uh, we have the three locations: one near um, uh, in Orleans, like you just mentioned, St. Joseph Boulevard. Uh, the other one being uh, Woodruff. Avenue, uh, not far from the Algonquin College, and then uh, the far west in Stittsville, which was definitely a little bit more suburbia. It's a little bit more what? A little bit more in, you know, in suburban Sub- kind of su- you know, setting. Okay, yeah. Yep. Yep, I understand. Um, yeah. The, uh, now, do, do, with those locations such I guess like um, Orleans they'd have their own municipal thing coming at you versus the Ottawa or is no, that all that's the, thing. the whole thing is all city of Ottawa right from one end to the other oh okay so, so yeah, that's it's, why it's it was big. a little bit easier in Ottawa I'd say mm-hmm. okay you know, um, bigger city, you kind of go a little bit more unnoticed you know yes yes I could see that now uh, we're going to go to the break here probably in about three minutes. So okay. you own three. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you own a few stores. Um, you do been doing this for well, almost 15 years, I guess, eh? 14 years. Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You got any, any suggestions you want to share or, uh, to help, um, choosing locations? Some people don't want to share the secrets, so I'll understand. <laughs> um, I, I like I said, I opened my stores on a budget. I didn't necessarily go for you know the you know the the most popular locations. Mm-hmm. I just kind of uh, I just went with what I could afford at the time. You know. Yeah, I could but see that. Not a whatever, whole lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I could see. Yeah, whatever you could afford, um, that all yeah. makes sense because. Can you overspend? Uh, then you, the sink, the, the ship sinks. Absolutely, it was. Uh, no, I mean that little tiny store was. Uh, I believe I started in seven hundred square feet, and uh, I literally lived in the back of the store. I had a small cot yes. that I just slept on in the back, and uh, I literally lived in the store for the first year. You know, he's not lying, so folks. Was, he did. It was tough. I, yeah, he. Uh, he did. He lived in the... I remember that. Yeah. yeah. Yep. <laughs> Memories, yep. eh? Flashback. Yes. It was, it was uh, tough in the beginning, for sure, you know? Yeah, wow. It's, and I uh, didn't have much of a budget to work with. So no. I had a, a small loan, and uh, that was it, you know? That was it, yeah, yeah. And then, um, you know, you eventually uh, got it enough that you, you actually had a, a, some, uh, an employee, for a while yeah. there, and yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. So um, no, I would actually work five days a week, and I had an employee coming in uh, one day a week on the weekend to cover the weekends, and yeah, and it was, uh, and, and and now how many um, how many employees you got now? You got three stores. Yeah, we have basically two employees per store. Two per so store, six at the moment. There you go. You got six. So you got six yeah. people that are counting on you. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely, jobs. exactly. Exactly. Yep. So, um, as far as the name of the store, Puffalot, how'd you come up yes. with that name? Um, 
I struggled with a name for the first little while because I had a I had an idea that I was going to be opening this type of store, but I I really struggled with the idea, and uh, it just kind of came to me one afternoon, and uh, I just went with it. Yeah, really. But I, I, I struggled with looking for a name. I just I didn't know what to use, you know. Yeah, it was just sort of that something that just popped in your it, your head and. Went... It, well, you know, I it do puff a lot. It popped in my head the one day, and then uh, I'm like, "Yep, that, that's it. Going with it," you know. Yeah, I think I think the last time uh, we were together, um, you had some pretty big coners going, didn't you? Pardon me. What? I said I think the last time we were together, you probably had some big cone coners going, some big joints. So you're probably yeah, absolutely. Like, see, yeah. <laughs> There's always big joints going around. <laughs> so yeah, I puff a lot. It just it, it just all works. We all works together <laughs> for sure. Yeah, it, it's uh, it's um, and uh, you also had uh, let's see what else. Uh, I also found you were the first place that carried business cards that were perforated so that you could use them as filters. Yes, I get them uh, on a natural cardboard uh, type paper with no gloss and uh, using a vegetable base ink. And uh, I'm still using the exact same recipe today. There you go. Holy smokes. Yep. All these years. Yep. Go through uh, about 50,000 business cards a year. <laughs> How many? About 50,000. About oh, 50,000 cards. Wow. Holy yep. crap. Wow. Okay, Len, uh, we're going to go for a break, and um, then when we come back, we'll, we'll continue our uh, conversation. So while we're going for the break, everybody's going to hear a little bit of music from the Tall Brothers and the song, You Get right. Me Too High, being that we puff a lot. Uh, and then right. in return, we'll, uh, <laughs> I will continue talking with Len, um, and this is the Pace Radio Show, and we're live on lifestyleradio.ca. This is the Pace Radio Show, and we're live. You're listening to Lifestyle Radio. You get me too high. I overanalyze. If you've ever been too high, then you can sympathize. You get me too, too high. And I start to fly if I said some silly thing, and that's the reason why. Shiva, my sativa. You get me too high. Canada, the time to act is now. These days, your customers are seeking variety. Increase your earning potential by expanding your inventory with CC Nexus, Canada's largest cannabis seed wholesaler. CC Nexus stocks over 60 reputable breeders, including Canuck Seeds, with a wealth of auto flower, regular, feminized, and CBD strains. All first-time customers will receive a free pack of Canuck Seeds, plus a mug, t-shirt, and additional promotional materials. Add strains and increase your profit with CC Nexus, your Canadian-owned and operated wholesaler of cannabis seeds. Discreet, worldwide stealth shipping from Canada, supporting you locally. Call today, 1-844-843-7995, 1-844-843-7995, or visit us at ccnexus.global. The following is a public service announcement from the Canadian Therapeutic Cannabis Partners Society. The Canadian Therapeutic Cannabis Partners Society is a non-profit organization dedicated to ensuring improved access to therapeutic cannabis and cannabis byproducts in Canada. With a federal government that has committed to legalizing cannabis, we feel it is our duty to ensure that the medicinal use of cannabis doesn't get lost in the process and that there are clear distinctions made between the medicinal and recreational use of cannabis. It is our mission to ensure that government regulation doesn't get in the way of a sick disabled or terminally ill person's right to use or produce this amazing natural health product. If you would like to get involved, you can contact us on the internet www.canadiantherapeuticcannabispartners.com On Facebook, CTCP Society Or search Canadian Therapeutic Cannabis Partners CTCP now operates a medicinal cannabis signing clinic. If you want to grow your own medicinal cannabis and are located anywhere in Canada, 
Then I'd like to suggest that you give them a call. They can be reached at 1-613-967-9888. That's 1-613-967-9888. And grow on with CTCP. Man, have you been to Canada Days yet? Canada Days. Campbellford's premier cannabis culture shop at 19 Bridge Street West. They've got bongs, oil rigs, grinders, and papers. Everything you need for consumption. They've got seeds, soil, nutrients, and dome trays, too. Everything you need for cultivation. Get top quality seeds from top suppliers like Canuck, Crop King, and wholesaler Nexus. Canna Days. They've got all kinds of awesome cannabis novelties, clothing, and apparel. I know, right? It's a lot more than just a bong shop. Interested in gaining legal access? Canna Days can help. They're a PACE information center. You know, people advocating cannabis education? Come by the shop and check it out. 19 Bridge Street West, Campbellford. Canna Days. Have your say without saying a word. Canadays.ca. Growing your own vegetables, flowers, or even medicinal plants can be a challenge without the right equipment and proper know-how. At BMA Hydroponics, not only are they your urban horticultural experts and suppliers, but their staff holds the customer's needs paramount to making a sale. Family-owned with decades of experience and knowledge, they offer free advice in person by phone or email. BMA Hydroponics wants to ensure you have the advice you need, which is why you'll find tips and tricks on different ways to grow, like WIC, Ebb and Flow, Drip, or Aeroponic System, as well as other helpful links at bmahydroponics.com. If you can't find what you're looking for, just let them know, and they'll do everything they can to get what you're looking for. At BMA Hydroponics, each staff member also possesses a federal exempt MMAR license, making their strong suit, empathy, experience, and dedication to their customers. Because when you know how to grow, you'll have results that make you proud. BMA Hydroponics in Belleville, Ontario. Visit bmahydroponics.com. BMA offers cannabinoid testing. So if you want to prove you've got good medicine, head to BMA Hydroponics and prove it. Hey, Shiva. Get me to hide. It's funny how the sky and each cloud and every moment seem to drift right by. You get me. Hello, hello, hello. You're listening to the Pace Radio Show, and we are live here at lifestyleradio.ca. And we can also be found at Spreaker as well as Mixcloud. And we can also be found at iTunes. That's just new this week. We gotta thank our producer, Al Rap, for that. Got all our stuff on iTunes. Uh, and uh, that's that's good to know. Good to see. Grow, grow, grow. Talking about growing. Uh, just so you know, we are here at the Canada Days store. We're in the front window. We are live, like I mentioned. And Wayne does have a customer in here. Well, someone's in chatting, anyways. And um, I'd like to remind everybody that uh, don't forget to tune in this Friday night for Al, Marcel, and the rest of the crew. Uh, the 420 crew, as I like to call them. Uh, they're right here at lifestyle.ca. Uh, Tune in every Friday, 7 p.m. for two hours of information and sometimes crazy talk as well as great music and always great guests. So I got people waving at me in the window here. <laughs> oh, and they're making their way to the store. Here they come. Uh, let's see. Len. Tonight yes. on the Pace Radio Show, we have our guest, Len Cote, owner of Papa Lot, a counterculture store located in the Ottawa area. Len, just so you know, we got, um, we got a sign out in front of the store here. And it says free cannabis in large reflective letters, and then underneath it it says information, and it says um, right. that it's a pace presentation on now. So these cars they they drive up and they stop and they look at it and they read the sign and the le- I'm at a stoplight like three cars from a stoplight and they stop there and they look at it and they look like they're reading the sign and then, and that's on a green light. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So nice, nice, nice you know. Bring in some attention, eh? Let people know. It's a, Absolutely. It's, a, it's, uh, it's a, been a very good sign for me, I can tell you that right now. Uh, because it, it's something I've used over the years when I was doing, I don't know if you know, I was doing the um, documentary movies, educational movies. And um, I put that out in front every time. And people come in and ask me for the free cannabis. Did you, uh, did you want us, <laughs> did you want us, did you want to, oh, 
Oh, I thought I'd try to get him to say something on the radio before he left. Hey, we got another customer here, Len. Maybe we can talk to her too before she leaves. And talking about uh, customers coming into stores and all that, uh, at the beginning of uh, the show, Len, you're talking about yeah. um, the different things that evolving and having to always come along um, for people, you know, to keep up with what's happening, right? Um, yeah. Is that something that, that uh, you're finding that you got to really step on, stay on your toes all the time? Like, you know, people might just think, oh, you just got to worry about having bongs and pipes and, you know, what all can there be about selling stuff like that? But there's a lot of different products that come out in the market, isn't it? I'm shocked the amount of products that have come out. Just even in the last five years, I've seen, like, uh, an increase of, you know, in between, you know, vaporizers and, you know, fancy pipes and, and and the glass market has just evolved at such a rate now that it's no longer just a smoking device. Like, you're actually buying a piece of art nowadays, you know? Correct. Yeah, I completely I completely agree with that. I got, I got some questions on that as we go along. So do you, sure. um, like, things like, you know, you opened a bong shop back there you know, 14 years ago. There was no such things as dabbing. You know, that's, no, that's a whole, not really. It's got to be a whole new market that's coming. Absolutely, absolutely, and it's um, it's really it's it's one of the driving forces behind uh, some of the higher end uh, artistic glass out there is the the dabbing rigs that are people yeah. getting involved with. Nice. Now, do you do you at the store? Um, like I know, obviously, you're you know glass shop. You sell glass products, but do you sell? Um, stuff as you describe as glass art and others. I know I do that myself. But it is glass art. It's just some of that stuff you know oh, you want to put it on display and not even use it. Almost yes. And uh, depending on some of these artists, uh, you know, if you follow the artists, some of their careers are really starting to take off now. Um, mm -hmm. The Canadian glass market is still, I would say, about five years behind the U.S. market. However, okay. when it catches up. Um, you know, pieces have really quite a potential of going up in value. Not just, yes. um, you know, it's not just your smoking device now. You're buying a piece of art that will actually increase in value, and you know, it's an some investment. Of them can actually be quite an investment. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, who are some of the artists that you carry? Oh boy, we carry quite a few Canadian artists. Um, Corey <laughs> Cottenham. Which okay, uh, yeah, for the last yeah. one competitions is pretty much known as captain of Team Canada. You're correct. Uh, yeah, I, I would have met him uh, at the TY Expo. Pardon me. I would have met him at the TY Expo when uh, they're doing the glass blowing contests. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Um, we have quite lots of. Uh, uh, well, actually, have three Corey Cottonum pieces at the Auto, uh, Orleans location at the moment. <laughs> We have some stratosphere glass, uh, lots of kahuna glass, skullfish, uh, Alex Gore. Uh, we even have a couple of local Ottawa glass blowers, uh, Zerk glass, yeah. Josh Kinhold. We have uh, Michael Weaver, who's just kind of getting into the game here now, but um, a very accomplished glass blower, just more or less slowly making the transition over to pipes, but uh, amazing skill. Um, who else do we have? Um, we have Gibson Glass. We have uh, Pied Piper, Clark Matthews. Boy, there's so many. <laughs> so many. Almost, well, uh, hey, it's, it's, you almost know, overwhelming. Uh, it's great that you've got all that there. You know, it's sort of showing yeah. your support uh, for that. Now, do you carry the marbles and things like that as well, or just basically the, the pipes and the, the uh, oil rigs? A little bit. Um, marbles, not as much. I have a few. Uh, however, pendants um, mm -hmm. by the the artists that are making the uh, the glass pipes is very popular also now, which mm -hmm. you know was kind of almost yeah. unheard of back then in the beginning. Like I know, I know from um, seeing some of those marbles at the expo is that like it's it, you look and you know it's like a a three inch ball that looks like it's like ten feet deep on the inside. Because they have vortexes yeah. and stuff like that, and then some of the, the little sceneries and things that they are created under underwater scenes or whatever. It's um, you know it's all pretty neat that what they do. Oh, the well, we got a customer. So you know, yeah. Lynn, we've got a customer here in the store, and she's approached the table. So I think she might have. You got a question? 
She has a question for you then, okay? Just hang on. If you want, you can just sure. say your first name. My name is Caitlin. I live in Camelford, Ontario, and I was wondering what your favorite method of smoking the shatter is. My favorite shatter? Which is which way do you prefer to consume shatter? Do you prefer to use a nail? Is it an electric nail? Do you prefer a, a torch? Do you uh, prefer glass my nails? My preferred method is obviously, uh, and I I have a personal glass rig that I like to use in a quartz uh, banger. Is uh, yeah. pretty much my preferred method. Yeah, quartz. Yeah. He's, I heard him but, say something about like a crystal. Yeah. Yeah, a, gla a glass rig with a quartz banger. Yes. Yeah, she says that's cool. <laughs> yeah. Nice. <laughs> There's so many different ways. Uh, the electronic gas pens are probably myself, the so pens like down the most convenient. You can just stick them in your pocket, pull them out, and have a puff so quick and easy. But uh, for the best flavor, I find quartz is my favorite. What were you going to say? Uh, okay, all right. Yeah, he's, he's sending messages. Okay. Um, thank you. Did you get? Did you get your? Phone? There you go. There's your free bottle of uh, bond cleaner. Nice seeing you again. That's right. Yes, yeah, it's been a while. <laughs> you know, it's a small town. You get to know everybody, right? Right. Oh, there you go. We, get, we always like to get some some you know, community involvement and things. Uh, okay, now let's see. Class artists, I asked you that question. Um, trends. Do you, we mentioned about uh, the, uh, do you find anything along the line that do you find? Sorry, I think I lost you. No. Them? Pardon me? I thought I lost you there for a second. No, I'm here. I'm here. Um, okay. I don't know whether you heard that about the trends. Trends is that happened. We talked about the the oil rigs and, and that. Now, do you find that uh, people, like at one time, uh, vaporizing wasn't very popular. Do you find people coming in and asking for the vaporizers and the portable vaporizers? Yes, absolutely. Uh, primarily the people that are not necessarily wanting to smoke, per se, you know? Yeah. Um, they just kind of want to have the medical benefits of the cannabis, but not necessarily smoke it. Um, the vaporizers are quite popular, yes. Yeah, good. And there's, good, there's so many different models nowadays. Uh, back in the yeah. day, it was just, uh, oh, I remember the original models were literally like a little soldering iron with a dish on the end of it inside of the mason jar, essentially. And, Correct. Uh, I, unbelievable and, and, technology how it's evolved now now what do you, what do you do um, um, as far as when it comes to you know you, you sound pretty um, what you, I'm looking for the word here crude I guess as far as the way they used to be what are you seeing in them now as far as a, a big benefit over the old stuff uh, just the, the function and the portability yeah, um, yeah. I mean back when I first opened the shop, I mean, there was no such thing as a portable vaporizer. They had, uh, they were all pretty much plug-in tabletop models for the most part. Right. But now, yeah. I mean, there's there's some that are, you know, so small, uh, you know, smaller than a cell phone and, uh, you know, perform in such a big way. It, uh, yeah. You know, it's evolved in leaps and bounds, literally, you know? Yeah, and now, like, uh, now you get them with, with, uh um the chambers inside you don't even have a uh, you don't even have a heat element so it's not not because uh, some of those first ones had your cannabis going up against the uh, coil yeah your cannabis onto an element and your stove right so it's nice to see where they've got like a heat chamber instead now yes no the technology has evolved and the thing is with the vaporizers there seems to be new ones you know literally being developed on a daily basis almost yeah there's always yeah, new I, models out, and I got customers coming in quite often asking for a model that I, have, I haven't even heard of, and I look it up, and it's like, oh, wow, another new model, you know, one of yeah. so many now. Yeah, so many exactly. Available. 
you got to you got to stay you mentioned you got to stay on your toes. Um, do you find Absolutely. that do, do you find that um, different products or maybe um, or the type of products are are preferred at because you got three different locations. Do you find that they're different at each location? Yes. Absolutely. Um, it, it definitely, depending on location, um, I find certain things will sell at one location that don't sell at another. Yeah, um, you do, eh? Kind of odd, you know. I mean, there's, yeah. there's always the trends, you know, but there's definitely you, uh, um, differences between the locations as far as what what the most popular items, you know. Yeah. It comes down to, I guess, the people who are in your area. I know that uh, Wayne here tonight had a guy come in and and um, thanked him. Thank you, thank you, you know, for opening the store. You know? So it's yeah, it, it just depends on where you where you uh, where you uh, end up at or where you go. So yes, um, absolutely. No, but then it's uh, I'm just glad to see that the culture is actually, you know, things are getting more and more acceptable nowadays. Yeah, I find with it being more in the news all the time. And uh, the government's talking about it, or the re- or the papers are reporting on it. Um, m- more people are getting educated on it, so yeah, um, people's uh, outlook on on it, or the way that they look at it, has changed. It is changing, but there's always more work to be done, right? Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Lots of work now, to be you done. Fi- talking about educated, are you finding that uh, the buyers? Are more aware um, of the product that they're requesting. Um, you know, are they asking more questions versus uh, years ago? Yes, absolutely. I mean, with the with the internet and uh, you know being available on most smartphones, people are uh, are really educating themselves a lot more now on the different products. And um, oftentimes, you know, customers will come in and they they already know what they want. They just you know. You know, they've already done the research, and they know they've got their decision narrowed down. You know. Yeah, but, yeah, uh, yeah. I'm. I'm people sure. are a lot more educated nowadays as far as the product. The information is just more readily available. Yeah, and um, now, do you, when it comes to some of your products, I don't know whether you get anything brought in from out of the country. Do you have any issues? Like, if you do, do you, did you ever have any issues of bringing stuff in? Um, I I try to get uh, as much as I can within Canada. Um, although I do bring in a little bit of stuff from the U.S., I, I so far I have not had any issues uh, um, bringing in products so far. No. Right. Uh, however, I mean all the product I am bringing in is you know 100% legal, so I have mm-hmm. uh, you know I haven't had really too many issues with that at all. No. No, that's good. That's good. That's uh, that's what you want to have happen. Uh, yeah. Let's see what else we got on here. About um, do you what what I've noticed here, okay, uh, in in our neck of the woods, because uh, I I do visit um, a few stores every month, and that is they seem to be blending um, the the head shop and the grow shop. And what I'm getting at there is, is let's say a grocery store has a cabinet, a display cabinet or two of of um, vape pens or pipes or something, or a or a um, bong and pipe store has um, some grow products. Do you see anything along that line in your neck of the woods? Yes, absolutely. There's quite a few shops that are uh, they're doing both. Um, Personally, I've decided uh, not to. I've just kind of just been sticking with the, you know, the mainly the the smoking products, and I haven't kind of been doing any of the grow products, unfortunately, at all. However, yeah. um, I'm seeing that a lot, mainly in the smaller towns where um, you have an all-in-one shop that literally caters and has, has everything, you know, everything from growing to, yeah. you know, all the different pipes. And, um Maybe, like you say, the, the smaller towns, you know, well, for example, here at Canada, it's, it's where yeah. Calford is 3,500 3, people, 45 minute drive to the city, you know, a, a city that's near us um, to get gross stuff. So sometimes, you know, it's, mm-hmm. 
it's probably a situation that you'd be looking at as an example of that. Whereas you're in yes, the city. Yes, absolutely. In the bigger city, obviously, you've got dedicated grow shops and dedicated head shops and some that do a little bit of both. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Now, um, we've got to about five minutes before we go to break. So what's, um, as far as on the store issue here again, what um, does the kind of future for Puff a lot? What do you, what do you see down the road? You know, will it continue to grow? Um, you know, will you think you're, will they outgrow their locations and you, you need to get a bigger store? Um, you know, are you maybe looking at, uh, possibly maybe down the road uh, having another location maybe out of out of Ottawa? Anything along that line? Uh, it, it's quite possible at, uh, at the moment though, no immediate plan. Um, yeah. And three stores is kind of keeping me quite busy. So. <laughs> I, I don't mad? know. Uh, I don't know. There might be a fourth one in the works, but uh, nothing, nothing at the moment. Right. Okay. Because yeah. like, I, I remember when you open, yeah, you had the one there, the Kingston one, and then you, you told me you were opening the one in Ottawa. And you're running back yes. and forth between the two places, and then all of a sudden I saw that you had three stores in Ottawa. And I, Holy crap! <laughs> yeah, that really yeah. exploded, and, eh? Well, it's uh, you know, I just you know the opportunity was there, and I just yeah. I went after it, you know. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I, nowadays it definitely keeps me busy. So I don't know. Uh, um, so if you're not maybe going to expand in store store wise, uh, you know, not right now. Any plans? What about product lines? I guess um, anything anything that you're aware of that's new that um, you're really excited about that's coming down the pipe that um, you might want to mention. Um. For us, primarily, it's, it's the glass art, the higher-end glass that, uh, you know, we're just getting new stuff all the time, and it's just like taking a personal passion in the in the glass art, and I get kind of excited when the orders come in. It's just uh, every piece <laughs> is just so unique, you know? Yeah, that's I know. Prim- it's, that's the direction it's... that primarily the store has been taking in the last uh, year or so. So is that just one particular store, or...? All three of the locations. Are you maybe um, taking one to do, you know, one thing, another store to have a little bit different stuff in it? Yes, uh, definitely. I mean, the Orleans location uh, recently was renovated uh, this June, and uh, mm-hmm. we've kind of, that's where we've kind of made, mainly been making a move towards the higher end glass, and then uh, slowly bringing some in at the other locations also. But it was yeah. mainly the one location where I did the big jump and kind of went from just a normal head shop to like a glass gallery. You know? Yeah, do you, um, that was one thing that I know we've talked, Wayne talked about here was if you're in the area that has you know access to that market. Yes, you're. Yeah, you know, you're in. Obviously, I don't know how many people are in the Ottawa area. Uh, well, I think we're just shy of a million now. Shy of a million, yeah, yeah. So yeah, you got you got the market. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and uh, yeah. you know, the people that are into the higher end glass, they they're willing to travel. Also, it's not just uh, you know, yeah, simple people purchases will travel anymore in order to find some uh, super quality stuff like that. Yes. Yeah, you find finding people don't mind that at all. Eh? Do you, so, uh, and do also, you, we also have been shipping out quite a bit of, um, of the glass pieces also. That's what um, I was just going to ask mainly, you. Mainly um, on Instagram, showing the pictures, and then people from oh, okay. you know, all over the place are seeing them and um, shipping so, every, things out coast to coast, essentially. So you're involved in social media as well, then? Yes, absolutely. We're on Instagram and Facebook. Yeah, okay. And... Um, they can people can actually so people can actually get a hold of you through um, those social medias and, and purchase things just as if they were yes. ordering something online. Yes. Nice. Nice. Yes. We don't. Always, uh, we have a website. Unfortunately, it's not uh, a full-on shopping cart yet. Uh, we are kind of working on it. Uh, we're yeah. just mainly uh, mainly through social media, primarily through um, Instagram. 
Correct. That's good. So um, we got about another minute here before we go to break. Uh, what's your Instagram account? Uh, it's Ottawa. Uh, sorry, Puffalot underscore Ottawa for the Instagram mm-hmm. and uh, just Puffalot on Facebook. And, and the website is uh, puffalot.ca. Good, good. And that way people can can find you, even though like you say it's not set up for selling stuff. Your website still has you know your information there where people can find you, right? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. It's got all the information about all three locations and a little bit about what we sell and some of the a few nice photos of some nice glass also. Yes. Okay, well, uh, we're going to go for a uh, break here, Len. Uh, when we come back, I want to touch on... Um, some advocacy stuff and uh, I guess to get you to talk a little bit on the personal side of things I know you like the outdoors and I've got a couple questions for that as well so all right sure. all right uh, sure. so let's let's go for a break uh, as I mentioned earlier our bumper music uh, features the tall brothers song uh, you get me too high and then return when we return Len and I will continue our conversation you're listening to pace radio show live here at lifestyleradio.ca You're listening to Lifestyle Radio. Shiva, my sativa, you get me too high. Get me too high. Hey, Shiva, got a fever. You get me too high. Growing your own vegetables, flowers, or even medicinal plants can be a challenge without the right equipment and proper know-how. At BMA Hydroponics, not only are they your urban horticultural experts and suppliers, but their staff holds the customer's needs paramount to making a sale. Family-owned with decades of experience and knowledge, they offer free advice in person by phone or email. BMA Hydroponics wants to ensure you have the advice you need, which is why you'll find tips and tricks on different ways to grow, like WIC, Ebb and Flow, Drip, or Aeroponic System, as well as other helpful links at bmahydroponics.com. If you can't find what you're looking for, just let them know, and they'll do everything they can to get what you're looking for. At BMA Hydroponics, each staff member also possesses a federal exempt MMAR license, making their strong suit, empathy, experience, and dedication to their customers. Because when you know how to grow, you'll have results that make you proud. BMA Hydroponics in Belleville, Ontario. Visit bmahydroponics.com. BMA offers cannabinoid testing. So if you want to prove you've got good medicine, head to BMA Hydroponics and prove it. Man, have you been to Canada's yet? Canada's. Campbellford's premier cannabis culture shop at 19 Bridge Street West. They've got bongs, oil rigs, grinders, and papers. Everything you need for consumption. They've got seeds, soil, nutrients, and dome trays, too. Everything you need for cultivation. Get top quality seeds from top suppliers like Canuck, Crop King, and wholesaler Nexus. Canna Days. They've got all kinds of awesome cannabis novelties, clothing, and apparel. I know, right? It's a lot more than just a bong shop. Interested in gaining legal access? Canna Days can help. They're a PACE information center. You know, people advocating cannabis education? Come by the shop and check it out. 19 Bridge Street West, Campbellford. Canna Days. Have your say without saying a word. Canadays.ca. Tune into the Pace Radio Show and catch Kim Cooper, Debbie Stoltz Giffen, or Allison Merlin, along with myself, Al Graham, as we talk to Canadian and international cannabis advocates who are working hard to help patients and to end cannabis prohibition. Catch us live every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time here at LifestyleRadio.ca. Canada, the time to act is now. These days, your customers are seeking variety. Increase your earning potential by expanding your inventory with CC Nexus, Canada's largest cannabis seed wholesaler. CC Nexus stocks over 60 reputable breeders, including Canuck Seeds, with a wealth of autoflower, regular, feminized, and CBD strains. 
All first-time customers will receive a free pack of Canuck Seeds, plus a mug, t-shirt, and additional promotional materials. Add strains and increase your profit with CC Nexus, your Canadian-owned and operated wholesaler of cannabis seeds. Discreet, worldwide stealth shipping from Canada, supporting you locally. Call today, 1-844-843-7995, 1-844-843-7995, or visit us at ccnexus.global. I overanalyze, if you've ever been too high, then you can sympathize, you get me too, too high. And I start to fly, if I said some silly thing, then that's the reason why. Shiva, my sativa, you get me too high. Hey, we're back, and we are the Pace Radio Show, and we be, are being broadcasted live here at lifestyleradio.ca, as well as at Spreaker. You can also find us at YouTube, TuneIn Radio, and we are live here at uh, Canada's. Um, before I um, move on to some can- something along that line, I want to mention something. But I want to remind everybody that our, our music tonight was by a BC-based band, Tall Brothers. We featured the song, You Get Me Too High. If you enjoyed their music tonight, then I suggest that you look them up on YouTube or go to thetallbrothers.ca. Uh, tonight we are joined by our guest, uh, Len Colty of Puffalot. Uh, Len, you there? Yes. Okay. I just want to make sure because we've, we've got another person here, another customer here at Canada's. That uh, I believe they have a question. Yeah, I'm getting a head nod. They want themselves. They want to get a free atomic bong, bong cleaner um, stuff here that uh, Wayne is giving away for free. So I'm going to hand the microphone over to her. She's got. Oh, oh she's getting. <laughs> uh, but all you have to do is just say just say your first name and ask your question. Okay. Hi, my name's Simone. And uh, I just want to know, what do you uh, personally believe works best for you, a higher CBD or a high THC? Um, personally, uh, my uh, medical issues, I have arthritis. So I find a, a mix of both works quite well for me. I like a nice balance of the CBD and THC. Do you, um, are you personally growing it yourself or are you going through a clinic? Um, I have medical cards. Uh, I did I uh, my prescriptions with uh, Tweed. Uh, the strain of my preference, I guess, is uh, the Devon. I believe it's about fourteen percent uh, CBD and ten percent THC. Yeah, that sounds and, really nice. Uh, I personally I will, just got uh, my license. Like from to uh, be able to grow for myself here soon. I personally just got my license from um, from my doctor. I get I suffer from chronic migraines. I get 15 to 20 a month usually, and my doctor just cleared me for carrying oil and uh, both the dried flowers as well. That's why I was wondering what other people's opinions are on what works best for them. Nice. Well, I'm glad you so found something that works for you. Yeah, and it's always good to you know have a conversation like that because. You know, even though there's a lot of education and knowledge out there, uh, it's nice to be able to get the report from uh, an actual patient that's uh, using the products, right? Absolutely. Yeah. And there's so sure. many different variations of it now that you just have to try quite a few to find what works for you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, it's, uh, it, it's uh, in the beginning, it's almost like trial and error, you know. It's not like where you can Absolutely. go in. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's good that way. Uh, okay, Len. Uh, advocacy. Advocacy. Well, when we first met, I used to bring you information and stuff that you hand out. Um, do you still um, get involved in um, cannabis advocacy, whether it's um, supporting um, the efforts of a group or, or getting involved yes, in absolutely. events or anything like that? Absolutely. Um, generally, at any of the locations, we have little pamphlets uh, from uh, various uh, cannabis info organizations, and um, everybody from actual 
doctors to, uh, you know, people just informing people about the uh, benefits of cannabis and uh, all, all the different forms of it. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, I find that it's, like, when we're, we're go ahead, you can, you can, you got them? We're just, just grabbing some free education information that we got here on the table. Um, down at the flea market, you know, there's people that come through that you wouldn't even expect um, to be involved in the cannabis community. And, you know, they, they're out there plugging away. You know, they, they, you know, they know so much and uh, they share it with others. So it's, uh, you know, being able to do that is, is uh, good. And having a, a store in that that gets involved in that, you know, I know over the years, um, I've come across places that were, you know, sort of, you know, reluctant. You know, they didn't maybe want to be, you know, splashed out there. But um, bye, see you later. Thanks, hey. Eh? Um, that um, uh, it's good to see, you, you know, that you're willing to, you know, do to get involved. Yes, yes, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, now, uh, when it comes to uh, the patients in your store, we talked about people coming in for vaporize. Do you have people come in looking for educational information? Yes, absolutely. I have people uh, coming in on a regular basis that are, you know, they literally, all they know is they're on, you know, prescription medications that's not working for them, and uh, uh, they literally don't even know where where to turn. You know, they talk to their family doctors and get turned away or laughed at. And uh, next thing you know, they turn up in the store asking, you know, if they could uh, help point them in the right direction. You know. Yeah, yeah. People uh, who just don't know where to go. Have, and... Yeah, they they're just completely lost. They really have nowhere to turn. And uh, sometimes just a little bit of guidance, and the next thing you know, they're uh, they're off getting the proper medicine that they need to. You know, help make your life better. You know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, do you do you have an advocacy section in your store, like uh, you know, a spot where people come in and pick up some free uh, educational information? Um, well, basically, just on the counter, I have a little section where some yeah. little, you know pamphlets and whatnot okay. from some of the yeah. Um, the other, you know, cannabis info organizations that are, that are helping patients uh, get in touch with the, you know, proper medical people. People, yeah. Well, I'll have to, I'll have to uh, send some your way. Absolutely. You know, the more the better. Yeah, I got. It's uh, yeah, yeah. Because um, I look at it, well, you know, that's what Pace has been all about is, you know, getting the education. And all that out there, it's something that um, I find that, you know, obviously is very, very, very important. Um, just on the medical aspect of it all, you know, allowing um, people and patients to know that you know, they have a choice, they have an option. And um, they don't have to take those opiate drugs. Because look, look at what the situation we got now. You know, so many people that are, that are addicted to opiates and, you know, you're seeing it on the news. Uh, I watched a, a segment this morning that was on the news about uh, you know some uh, doctor that was trying some other route and she got condemned because she refused to give an opiate drug to treat a patient for uh, op for having too many opiates. So and That's it'd be good. nice to see them you know to get uh, involved in them. Cannabis to help people with the opiates. So, oh, oh, I just heard a click. Hello, hello, I'm still here. Hello. I'm still here. You, you hear? Did you did you hear me talking about the opiates? Uh, I missed part of it. No, I think I. Yeah, phone yeah, cut no a little problem, bit. But you're back. You back? Does it matters? Uh, yeah, you know, it was just the people. You know, there's so many people. Like when we were doing the shows in Toronto and that with treating stuff, we would run across people who were tired of, sick of uh, doing the opiate drugs, and they were looking for something else. You know, and cannabis can help so much. You know, for people in that situation. Like, I actually know a lady who, um, who was a heroin addict. 
she moved um, they moved her on to to uh, methadone because originally you know it was that's what it started at right methadone was helping people with yep. heroin now it's now it's being used for people on prescription drugs because there's so many so many people who are who are addicted to opiates and if they knew that they had a choice to use cannabis instead it's scary the amount of opiates that are you know out there that are out there. Oh, yeah. And like when I got uh, when I got uh, first diagnosed with, with my Crohn's, that was the first thing I did. Is I looked up to find out what benefits the cannabis could do for me and my Crohn's because of the opiate end of it. I knew about the addiction part, and it also makes you constipated. So I didn't you know, I didn't want to have to deal with that crap. Yeah. You no. Know, it's it's an, it's a choice that people should have. So. All right. Um, so you're involved with the advocacy, which is good. Help, help promote. Now, um, on the um, personal end of things, uh, two things. Uh, the, the young lady there asked you about your medicinal use, um, arthritis. Do you yep. do you, do you have um, a preferred way of uh, medicating? Some people, you know, they just prefer to smoke. Some people find benefits of edibles um, um, I've been experimenting with uh, a little bit of uh, edibles and uh, they, they are definitely working um, I find the edibles are they, um, it's it's a slow release you know it lasts a lot longer which I'm kind of enjoying the benefits of that but uh, obviously uh, just my quick go to is uh, just you know rolling up a joint for the mm -hmm. most part Joint and uh, yeah, you know, yeah. in the evenings, I will uh, you know, get into concentrates and then uh, yeah. that's pretty and much then, my primary methods of uh, yeah, that's, consuming. That's what I found is um, the edibles um, help with um, muscle pain and stuff like that, it helps relax things. Um, yeah, but yeah, my preferred method is to smoke or. Vaporize, you know, with the with the nail or whatever myself as well. So, uh, yeah, some people, you know, they, some people have different uh, preferred methods. So it's always nice to find out. Yeah. And some people have something. Uh, say they're into the edibles end, and you know, you you got a store there. Now I don't know, know whether uh, magic butter machines or anything like that, but uh, it's make a um, chocolate. Like I, I made some chocolate. Recent um, trail mix in with the medicated chocolate blend and all it into molds and you know it, it always makes it nice, nice and easy. Nice. Hey. So we have the back, uh, uh, magical see, butter yeah, machine at the yeah. store also for sale. Oh, do you sell the Magic Wonder machine, do you? Yes, absolutely. Great little machine, isn't it, eh? Yes, beautiful little machine, very well made. Yeah, um, it's nice. I just said it all the other day. Nice. I know you've been uh, doing your own edibles for quite a, quite a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I found the benefits in it. Uh, they help, so... I gotta, I gotta consume them moderately though. I gotta watch how I do it because sometimes, like you know, okay, I'm a guy with Crohn's, so I can't really, um, uh, you know, eat a lot of brownies or a lot of baked goods. So it's sort of in moderation, and then capsules as well. Eh? Yes. Yeah. Now uh, you're also a person who likes the outdoors. I see on your. Um, Facebook wall, you got this this friggin' huge, huge fish. Huge fish. <laughs> yeah. What is that? Is that a real fish you got there in that picture? Absolutely. It's a lake trout from Lake Nipigon. Really? Like how big, how much did that thing weigh? Oh, I think it was like uh, around 30 pounds. 30 pounds. Holy smokes. Oh God! <laughs> do you get them often? Um, it's a trip I like to do every year. Yeah, I go up in uh, in March and 
we just uh, do some lake trout fishing through the ice, and it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. It and we get quite a, a few large ones up there. Yeah. Uh, it's, you know, it, it's massive. I, I just, I went, holy crap, when I went and looked at that, <laughs> I went, wow, that's a massive fish. So, um, so do you just do, like, uh, daytime fishing, or do you do the whole camping experience? Um, Both. I like to do both. I mean, any, uh, I just love fishing. <laughs> you just love fishing? Any way I can get out, <laughs> yep. I guess, you know, you're sitting, you're out in your boat. Uh, I think I saw a picture. You got a dog? Got a dog with you out there in the boat? Yes, absolutely. That's your, I, your fin Yeah. Oh, I think I lost you. Yeah, I've so yeah, yeah. It's uh, I seem to be dropping off the Wi-Fi and back on again. So the problems at my end right now. Just so you know. Okay. Um. Yeah. And just if they drop off, just wait. I'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> now, the um, go now. The last time, you know, we, well, no, I wouldn't say last time, but I know one of the times we talked about your fishing experiences. Um, you take your volcano with you? Do you still take your volcano fishing? I still, sorry, I missed that. Okay, you used to take your volcano vaporizer with you when you went fishing. Do you still take your? <laughs> it's not in the boat. Well, I haven't in, the... in a while. No, uh, we have got portable ones now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, you know, so have a. A large bag instead of a part of one. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, I the technology. Telling, I remember you telling me about that. Was that was that hard on your batteries or anything like that? Um. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, it. Uh, I've drained a few batteries with it. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I stranded up in the woods. <laughs> Christ! I had to run my volcano. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, so do you do any other outdoor activities besides fishing? Uh, fishing and uh, snowmobiling are my two main outdoor activities. Do, do you combine them? Like, do you go snowmobiling, do you go ice fishing? Absolutely, yes. Yeah? Um, yes, yeah, absolutely. I guess you're in... You're in the uh, you're in the Ottawa area, so obviously you guys have had some weather up there. Um, you to do that, like like we just had rain here yesterday. The, the, I have seen some huts around here, but it's a little more north of us. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, it's um, I don't like we're not getting like even here right in town here the the river used to freeze over like you couldn't fish on. The because it is flowing underneath, but um, it's uh, you know I just don't see it. I don't see them in the lake. So you guys, you guys got much better that way for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Well, so we you definitely know, you get uh, a lot more snow, here. and temperatures are just usually a few degrees lower. Also, yeah, it's right. Well, then um, let's see. Talked a bit about uh, we've talked about your store, we've talked about advocacy, we've talked about your present. You know what you're looking down for the future. Is there anything offhand that um, you know maybe that we didn't touch on that uh, uh, that maybe you might want to or you know? Uh, nothing I can think of here off the top of my head. No. No. Eh? So um, this is your first experience of doing a radio interview. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, see, that wasn't too bad, eh? Just like talking to you no, guys. No, wasn't that at all. No, and you know it was, it. it was great. It was great tonight. It was great tonight. This is the f first time, really, that we've had some in-store action like that. So that was great. Uh, you're uh, very nice to be able to, to you know, answer some questions. No, uh, they were. Wayne's asking loud in the background. John. I was fine. Sorry, you're, anyway, you're so. cutting out here. Uh, oh, I'm cutting out in. 
All right. Well, yeah. let's just let's just sort of wrap things up here. Then time will wraps. Um, okay. That way, I'll stop cutting it. All right. So uh, <laughs> let's see. Have you got? A, uh, you want to throw a shout out to uh, anything? Uh, your website. Let people know where it is again, and where you, they can get a hold of you on Instagram. Sure. Uh, our Instagram um, is uh, Puffalot underscore Ottawa. Uh, you can look us up on Facebook, and we have our um, website is uh, puffalot www.puffalot.ca. Good, good, thank you. Okay, um, and this is just a reminder to let everybody know that I will be back uh, next Wednesday with my joint host guest. Don't forget also to um, go to the Pace website in order to get your free stuff. Pace online or pace hyphen online.ca. Send us a message saying you want some free stuff, and we'll send you some educational information. Doesn't matter where you're located, we'll send it to you. Uh, you can find Pace, uh, the Pace Radio Show, on Facebook. We're also on Twitter at Pace Radio. We are on the web at pace hyphen online.ca. Thank you. Go to our sponsors, always the friendly folks at BMA Hydroponics, they're in Belleville. And they are on the web at bmahydroponics.com. Uh, plus, a big thank you goes to uh, CC Nexus, Canada's cannabis seed wholesaler. They're located at uh, ccnexus.global. Thank you to our producer, Al Rapp, a Lifestyle Radio. And to you, Len, thank you for being um, a guest on the show tonight. Uh, Len, in case anybody didn't notice, owner at Puffalot, uh, three stores located in the Ottawa area. It's great to see the success. A guy who challenged, he talked about uh, having to sleep in the back of the store when he got started. He didn't have a place to live. And now he's got three stores. So it's fantastic. Uh, uh, and thank you to our, uh, our listeners. End of the program, and I'd like to wish you all a good night. Good night. Have a good night. Have a good night. Good night. So what are you doing? Nothing? Why not? Trying to get on this Lifestyle Radio website. Sounds like a cool website. Yeah, it's alright. Oh, I might have it. You might have it. You're listening to Lifestyle.